Having spent two glorious days at Lake Baikal in Siberia, it was time to keep moving towards Beijing. We boarded a train in the Irkutsk and rode through the night and most of the next day towards the border with Mongolia. The formalities of the border crossings took forever, but eventually we chugged off again to Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. The great excitement for me was spotting our first Gurs, the white circular tents lived in by the nomadic tribes of this area. We visited a grandmother and her numerous grandchildren. She used to be a teacher but has returned to her nomadic lifestyle since retiring. The children stay with her over the long summer school holidays. There were three girls in this camp. One was for sleeping, a second one was for cooking and socialising and the third belonged to a friend of the family. Each girl is made exactly the same. There are two poles in the centre. Men and guests live and socialise in the area of the gur to the left of the two poles. Women cook in the area to the right. The door always faces to the south for sunlight. There is an opening in the roof for air which can be closed. There are five animals which are sacred to the nomads. Cows, sheep, goats, 
yaks and horses. Most roam free. Sheep and goats are herded by the children. The cows come home by themselves to be milked twice a day. There are 18 types of food made from the milk of these animals. The nomads mainly eat milk and meat products. Fruit and vegetables are quite rare because they can't grow any with their nomadic lifestyle and the freezing climate. arrived at the Chinese border late at night. This time, as well as all the usual passport and security rigmarole, we had the changing of the bogies. These are the wheels under the carriages, and they have to be changed at the border because the railway lines in China are a different width to those in Mongolia and Russia. Our carriage was shunted into a large shed. Hydraulic arms were extended under the carriage. We were slowly lifted into the air, our bogies were wheeled away, and another set was wheeled under and everything was screwed back into place. When we awoke the following morning, we could already see that China was very different to southern Mongolia. It was much greener, there were hills, and there was much more agriculture and infrastructure. before we reached Beijing, we passed through a range of steep, rugged mountains with villages in the valleys and a surprise temple hiding behind a hill. We saw most of the major tourist sites of Beijing, but most impressive of all was the Great Wall. Building was begun way back in the mists of time, but continued in fits and starts until peak construction from the 14th to the 17th centuries under the Ming Dynasty. The wall was built not only to keep out invaders, but also as a troop highway to allow quick and effective movement in defence of the kingdom. It must have been a magnificent sight through the years with the changing of the seasons. Crisp, clean, green vegetation in spring and summer, bright reds and oranges in autumn, deep white snow in winter. But now, unfortunately, the air is so polluted that any decent vision is no longer possible.
觉是啥样的人吧，过一下。走走，咱走家门。Once we'd finished our tour, I moved into my own accommodation in a hutong, far away from the hustle of the touristed areas. Life was very different there. The Lama Temple was just down the road. It's still a living temple with dozens of monks living, studying and praying there. Hundreds of people roamed about, bowing before the Buddhas, lighting incense sticks and enjoying the ambience. It was a fitting end to this most amazing journey, all the way from St. Petersburg in Russia to Beijing in China. <laughs>